Hi uh, guys, Dane and Biggie here. It is Monday. We are just chilling. I am still reading Just Kids by Patty Smith. I don't really have anything to update you on. I just wanted to give you a little, a little hello, a little hello clip. Be oh, before we get started. Oh, here, have a cat's bottom. All right, okay. Holla! Okay, well this will be interesting to see how long the battery lasts here. A uh, few updates really. Well, my work is super quiet and down and I'm worried it's a Christmassy lull. And I'm kind of skint. So I've been going through my vinyls and some old books that I don't want to read anymore to do some unhauls and to add all those to my eBay store. So I'll link to that below. But it's got me thinking and I think I'm going to downsize my book collection. I'm going to do a full video on that anyway to explain why. But the gist of it being like it's now unwieldy and it's now not really fun to have this many books. And there's loads, like there's money lying around in books that I'm never going to read again. It's better for the environment if I can sell them on to people, you know. And then I can just keep just the books that I really love. And actually, I might even be able to raise some money from selling the other books to buy like nicer editions. So I'm going to go start going through at some point and getting rid of some stuff. And uh, then that'll also make it easier for if slash when I move. I mean, I'm kind of at the point here where I can't really move from where I'm at because I have so many books, it would just be very difficult, you know? But I'm going to skip, like, people like Agatha Christie, for example. I'll skip her and keep all of the books I've got of hers for now. Eventually, the plan will be to kind of downsize even my Agatha Christie collection, but to get some, like, really nice facsimiles and stuff. I already have a few, so... Um, yeah, that's the kind of ultimate plan because I don't need a full collection of Christie. Um, yeah. So anyway, I'm going to be doing that. As for reading, I finished reading Just Kids by Patty Smith. It was excellent, a four out of five. Very solid memoir. You don't really get to hear too much about Smith's like music career, but you get to see a lot about her kind of formative years and the time she spent with Robert uh, Mapplethorpe, who was like her lover and also an artist. Uh, he sadly died, like he died in like 1989, and this book kind of ends before that. It mostly focuses on the late 60s, early 70s. So it's a really good little snapshot of time and of like young lovers, hence the title, Just Kids. Very moving as well though. Um, yeah, definitely I would recommend it if you like a good memoir. If you're a huge Patti Smith fan, there's actually probably not that much in there about her actual career, but, um, definitely interesting to see more about her as a person and that's just some really heartbreaking stuff like when she was in hospital she was a teenager pregnant and she gave the baby away for adoption but while she was there the nurses were joking about cutting her hair and it's just like really harsh you know I've also read a Jack and the Beanstalk it was okay it was a bit of a weird uh, take on this and the witch in it well the good witch or whatever who sold who made Jack get the seeds she basically just wanted to send him up the beanstalk to kill the freaking jag uh, giant so She's like quite manipulative, but but oh well. I'm about to read Little Red Riding Hood as well. I'm not probably not going to mention it again because I'm just going to read these and put them away, you know? Because uh, I'm just cracking on with these. And again, because I've been I've unhauled and DNF'd a lot of books, so I want to kind of crack crack on with these ones just to get to a truer currently reading number, I guess. Um, but also, for my main book, I've just picked up Divided, Why We're Living in an Age of Walls by Tim Marshall. And this is... Basically, as it sounds, it's non-fiction, all about walls and what they mean in our society. So I've just read about China, and now we're on to uh, Trump's wall in America. So I've literally only just started it, but it's really fascinating so far, and I'm going to be doing a full review. And this is the kind of book that Noemi would be interested in as well, so I might even see if she wants it after I read it, as I'm going to be, again, downsizing my, my book collection, so I can give her books, as opposed to just insisting that I keep all of them, if that makes sense. I don't know, we'll see. Oh, and speaking of Noemi, I'm over to see. I'm off to see her later on. She's actually she's got a busy week at work this week as well. Um, but this evening she's off to do like CPR training, basically, and like life-saving training, that sort of thing. Because she's doing some volunteering for the homeless. Um, but I mean, she also works for the Air Force, so it's a useful skill to have, you know. And I think she has done training, but she says it's been about three years, so it's going to be good for her to update that. But then I'm off to hers afterwards, and we're probably going to read some Boule de Feu by, um, I've forgotten her name again. Anais, Anan, Anukrika. 
Oh, and I started reading Trois Nouvelles by uh, Edgar Allan Poe last night, and I'm like a third of the way through already. It's really good. It's actually easier to read it in French than in English. And also, there was an introductory essay that wasn't translated. It was all in French, but I understood it, and it was very sad. Poe did not live a very happy life. Mara's talking about Agatha Christie. Books like whoa. I also made a stew. Winter vegetable stew, very nice. And right now, let's have a little look. Oh, I feel the warmth. Mmm, smells good. I'm attempting to make bread. Oh, let's have a look. How's my bread doing? It's coming along, it's coming along. So obviously it needs a little bit a bit longer, but I will show you how it how it turns out. Right, okay, where are we? It is Wednesday. It is about 1 p.m. Uh, I've been kept fairly busy. I've been editing a lot of booktube videos and updating my eBay store with some of the books and vinyls and stuff I'm listing. I haven't actually attacked the main bulk of my book care uh, bookshelves yet, but it is on my radar to do at some point. And uh, yeah, last night Noemi did uh, some like CPR training and stuff. Well, like emergency treatment because she's volunteering to help Wickham Homeless Connection. So that's provided, you know, in case, I don't know, someone has an overdose or something, I guess, or a heart attack or, or whatever, you know. Um, but she was quite stressed out about it because obviously it's not taught in her native language. But she said it was alright. And last time she did it, it was really stressful and done with, as part of uh, her job. So... So yeah, she seemed happy with that, and then I went over afterwards um, just to sort of chill. We ha I had a peach tea, and we read some more of Boule de Feu by uh, Anouk Ricard. So almost finished that now, so that's very good. And yeah, and then I stayed over and then came back this morning and have been working this morning, doing various bits and bobs, a little bit of work. Been doing some stuff for Emmanuel Fombu, who wrote The Future of Healthcare. And then I've also been um, writing some book reviews for another client and just doing a bit of admin as well. I, don't, I basically don't have any work on whatsoever at the moment and I'm kind of worried about it because I need to work, you know? So, yeah, I'm just working working hard. I do, I do know I have some briefs coming in at some point as well. So, like a lot of the stuff I'm doing at the moment is kind of working ahead with things really, but needs to be done, you know? Anyway... I've read another one of these fairy tales, so I read Puss in Boots by Vera Southgate. This one was interesting because I had a similar thing to what I had with Cinderella, where like, the cat convinces the shape-shifting ogre to turn into a mouse, and then the cat eats him. And I'm like, what if the ogre turned back into an ogre in the cat's stomach? Would the cat explode? But I suppose, I don't know, cats aren't very nice when they eat mice, so they sort of play with them a bit, and he was probably dead, you know? So, uh, so yeah, there's that. And then I've been reading Divided by Tim Marshall. So this is about, uh, like, walls and why we live in an age of walls. It's really interesting so far. Got a lot to say about kind of modern politics and where a lot of our wall-building ideas and stuff come from. Like, why we build walls in the first place. It's kind of messed up, to be honest, but definitely an interesting read. And, uh, yeah, also this guy wrote a book called Prisoners of Geography and... When I was at Noemi's yesterday, her housemate, Greg, he, he came in and he was like, oh, what are you reading? So we were chatting and he's read Prisoners of Geography and he might even have it. So we might be swapping uh, once I finish reading it, which would be quite cool. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, just cracking on with that, really. And that's where I'm at. I'm going to go do some other filming as well. I've got some parcels to open, but I pretty much know what they are. One of them will actually be the book that is going to uh, follow... Uh, Boule de Feu for us for our bedtime reading because it's the first Asterix comic in French, so that's pretty banging. It is a school. I would say they came out looking pretty good, man. But we Got a bit of give to them. The I'm gonna have one in a minute and let you know what I think. Hello, it is Friday, Friday evening. It's been a bit of a crazy day to be honest. I, I woke up at like seven because I, I had a bad day with my mental health yesterday. And to be honest, I was just going to stay home alone, but then Noemi invited me over and we watched this really sweet animated movie. It was called, it had Reuben in it, Reuben something, Reuben Brandt Art Collector, I think it was called. And it was good. It was about this guy who had like, uh, it was about this guy who had this like fear of paintings and then he kept getting haunted by them. Like the paintings kept coming alive and attacking him. So that was cool. Uh, yeah, today I was supposed to have phone calls, but I rescheduled them because I had loads on. I was at the art centre earlier helping to set up for the Christmas party, which is taking place tomorrow. So that'll be good. 
Uh, oh, and then this evening, I'm hopefully going over to Noemi's. We're both super tired, to be honest, but there's a gig near her house, so I think we're gonna have ratatouille. Like, proper French-made ratatouille. I think her mum made it and sent it to her. Or maybe she was just offering it to me, I don't know. But I'm well excited. Um, so we're gonna have that and maybe a few nice beers. Assuming she's awake, because at the moment she's napping. And if she's super tired, then we can just see each other tomorrow. But assuming we do see each other, there's also a gig. A guy called Big George, who, um, he does like, I don't know, music and stuff. <laughs> I'll take up some footage on my phone if I remember and if I go. But um, yeah, I've seen him play before. I know him. Like, he's a, I wouldn't say he's a mate, but he's an acquaintance, certainly. But seeing as it's at the pub right around the corner from Noemi's house, it seems like a nice thing to do. And we're both really into seeing live music. I've got some books to update you on. I'm going to update you on these first. These are the little, the you know, Vera Southgate little ladybird books. So you have Rapunzel, obviously the classic tale of the Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. With this one, I'm amazed that A, that the weight of somebody climbing up her head didn't just drag her out of the window. And also she's she's a bit ditzy, I guess, because she's used to the witch being like, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let me down, let down your hair. And then this prince comes along and he's like, Rapunzel, Rapunzel, let down your hair. And she doesn't realise that it's a different person. And it's like, it's definitely two different voices. Um, but yeah, it was okay. It was like a 3.5 out of 5, I guess. Rapunzel's never been my favourite, really. Well, I don't, hair freaks me out a little bit. I just, I don't like thinking about it. Like... I don't know, you would think with all this hair, I'd be more used to it, especially like haircuts. Charlie, Charles Heathcote was talking the other day about how he hates getting his hair cut. And I was like, yes, Charlie, me too. It is not good. It is not fun. Next up, what we got here, this is Rumpelstiltskin. So basically this is the tale of the, the guy lies to the prince and tells this prince that his daughter can spin straw into gold. And he believes this random guy and then basically threatens to kill the girl if she doesn't turn the straw into gold. It's quite harsh, really. But um, also, I, I thought in this picture, it looks as though the guy, the dwarf, the dwarf called Rumpelstiltskin, it look, doesn't it look as though he's got his chin stuck in the loom there? Like his beard, his, like, he's like, he's looming his beard. Uh, yeah. And so then, basically, Rumpelstiltskin pops up. He's like, oh, I can turn it into gold for you, but you need to give me something. So she gives, gives him his ring, gives him, so she gives him a ring, and then she gives him gives him something else, and then she like agrees, I think, to marry him or something. I don't know. I can't remember. Just again, it's not another one of my favourites. Just a pretty standard 3.5 out of 5. It's an okay interpretation of a pretty dull fairy tale, I reckon. And then we have the princess and the frog, and I'm actually not sure if I've ever come across this one before. Basically, the the princess loses her like she has a golden ball. What are you doing, Biggie? Well, she has this golden ball and it falls into a pond and the frog goes in and gets it for her on the condition that she, like, agrees to let him, like, follow her home and sleep on her pillow and eat from her plate and all this stuff. And then she runs off. She tries to do a runner and just leave him there. But then the frog tracks her down. And then, to be fair, the king, the king is like, no, you made a promise. you got to keep your promise to the frog. And, uh, yeah, eventually the frog turns into a prince because that happens a lot in fairy tales. But, um... Yeah, it was good Good for uh, the moral in it, actually. I would probably give that one like a 3.75 out of 5. A good, like I say, a good solid model, moral. Then we have what is probably my least favourite book of the year so far, which is interesting because it's in December as well. Persuasion by Jane Austen. So, I don't want to offend anybody and, you know, I know Austen's a lot of people's favourite author. And actually, that's why I read her. I've read some of her juvenilia, like some of the stories she read when, wrote when she was a teenager. And to be fair to her, I don't think she ever intended for them to be published. But they wound their way into my box set of the Penguin Little Black Classics. And I read them and they weren't very good. In this one, at least she has since learned how to spell. But she still, I just don't think she can write very well. Like, I wrote in my review, she's like more, um... I don't know, uh, what's the word that I use? You know how, Di yeah, was it, overwritten? So, like, how Dickens is pretty overwritten. But at least in Dickens, it, 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 like, investigates some, like, social issues and there's more of a plot. I know there are, like, social issues in this in terms of different classes and stuff. Like, to me, it just seemed like a lot of horrible people all worrying about stupid stuff. Like, women being like, oh, well, I hope I didn't say the wrong thing because maybe now he won't marry me. And I'm just like, ugh. Oh. So... Yeah, I mean, I guess if you were interested in, like, 18th century social mores, then it would be a good book to read. But I'm just reading it as a reader, and everyone's always like, you know, Jane Austen, you should read Jane, read Jane Austen. And having now read two Jane Austen things and not liked either of them, I'm going to go ahead and 
not read any more Jane Austen. <laughs> She's just not for me. And like, I don't think it's like, because with Virginia Woolf, the first time I read Virginia Woolf, a lot of it went over my head and the language was difficult and stuff. Um, and then I reread it a little bit later and now I've been reading some more of her stuff. And like, I, I get similar vibes in that it's very difficult to read, but the payoff is worth it for Virginia Woolf. And the same with Dickens, the payoff is worth it. Whereas with Jane Austen, it's just like, yeah, like it just, and also then I started zoning out as well, so like for the latter half of the book I couldn't really tell you what happened. There was a bonus chapter in my edition actually, which actually funny enough was probably my favourite of the chapters, but, but yeah, I don't know, it just wasn't for me man, it wasn't for me. And then I read Divided, Why We're Living in an Age of Walls by Tim Marshall, so I'll be doing a full uh, video review of this. But basically this is non-fiction about the rise of walls around the world. So it starts off with China and looks at the, the Great Wall of China and then the Great Firewall and then we move on to the USA and like Trump's border wall. We have some stuff about the UK and like whether there may be a, a border in Northern Ireland and between Northern Ireland and the Republic of Ireland after Brexit. Which according to some leaked government documents or whatever that Jeremy Corbyn's found. Like he finds a lot of stuff just lying around but um, yeah, apparently that's what the Tory plan is. I don't know. I hate everybody. I think everyone's trying to dick the country over, so fuck them. Um, yeah, and also everyone's talking about the election at the moment. I've actually closed my Facebook for now, and I'm also not using Twitter anymore, really. I never used it much anyway, so I've just updated it so it says this is literally just a distribution platform. So, I mean, you can tweet me if you want, but it might take me a while to pick up on it, I guess. So everyone's being horrible to each other about the election, and I've already po sent my postal vote, and also I don't agree with what people are saying, because you've got... Like, a lot of, like, people saying to other people, like, well, if you don't vote for Labour, then you're voting for Tory because you're splitting the vote and you should tactically vote. And I personally don't think tactical voting is a good idea. I'm just voting for what I think is the best solution. So, you know, but I don't appreciate people then having a go at me for voting according to what I believe in as opposed to what I strategically think might help something that I don't believe in but I don't believe in less, like, you know what I mean? I'd rather Labour than Tory, but I'm not gonna vote for Labour just to help Labour win if I don't think that they're the party that I agree with, you know what I mean? So, oh, fucking politics, man, I hate all that shit. Uh, and I'm starting to sell some of my books as well, so you can see that little pile there. I don't know if you can see up there. We have some space in this bookcase. So basically, I'm gonna go through and I'm, gonna, I'm selling a load of the books that I don't really want or I don't plan to reread and I'm just kind of cutting down my collection to make it more manageable for if slash when I eventually move you know and also to make a few pennies. I am currently reading A Skin Full of Shadows by Francis Hardinge. Uh, I'm buddy reading this with Anthony Andrews uh, who you guys might remember used to have a booktube channel back in the day and I believe he's coming back to booktube I'm not sure but he dropped me an email and was like do you fancy buddy reading anything and he sent me like a list of I think like three books that he was interested in and normally that's pretty unlikely that I'm going to want to read any of those but he mentioned yeah skin full of shadows and it's got these cool edges look um, and I've read the lie tree not long ago and I thought that was great this is kind of similar in that it's like magical realism mixed with historical fiction here we're more in like the 1680s I want to say and um, yeah basically people have the ability to like harness ha like harbour ghosts inside their heads and you get this like old family who are, I don't know, using that for some nefarious purposes and we follow this young girl who uh, has that ability. Now she's got a fucking bear inside her. I'm about halfway through, it's really beautiful, uh, really well written and well thought out so far. So hoping to get that done by the end of the weekend. And then I'm going to pick up Day by Eli Weisel, which I'm going to buddy read with Alex of Alex Black. Lots of buddy reads on at the moment. Yeah. <laughs>
You can't leave her hanging like that in the middle of the line, can you? Alright, she stopped. Okay, good. Good timing. Uh, I'm watching Postmodern Jukebox. Because they, some of their, I've been watching them for a while now. Uh, they're on YouTube, actually, if you guys haven't come across them. Uh, they're, rum they're like led by a guy called Scott Bradley, who's the piano player. And like, he arranges like popular songs um, in like different styles. So, uh, what else have I got? Oops, I did it again to listen to in a second. Seven Nation Army as well. Uh, all by this is Hayley Reinhardt is the singer, but they have like a rotating lineup of singers. The point being, we watched this film the other day called <sighs> Rubens Brandt Collector, I think it was called, and it was this animated movie that was mental. This art collector, well, this no, he was like a therapist, um, but it, things were coming out of paintings basically and like coming real. So imagine like you get attacked by Edward Munch's The Scream or something. That's basically the premise of the film. But they used some postmodern jukebox in the soundtrack. And when it played, I was like, that's postmodern jukebox. And um, No Amy really enjoyed. Biggie, stop attacking the tree. And No Amy really enjoyed the music as well. So I've just sent her some links. So that's why I'm listening. I'm listening to the ones I sent over because they're some of my favourite ones. It is currently Sunday. Yesterday was the Art Centre Christmas party and the photo shoot thing as well. So I went to get my photo taken with Dave. I don't know. Should I go back to Friday? Did I give you an update yesterday? I think I did no I don't think I did okay on Friday we went to Noemi's and had some food we had some ratatouille it was like proper French ratatouille that her mum had made as well her mum had made it in France with vegetables from their garden and uh, sent it sent it to her um, so it was really good as you can imagine and uh, yeah then we went to see a band we went to see a guy called Big George who's like uh, he's well known in the like the Wickham music scene uh, he sings a lot of bluesy stuff I was saying to Noemi that uh, he when I've seen him in the past, he's very much just stood in front of the microphone and just sang into the microphone. And like uh, Dave pointed out, the reason is because he used to use cheat uh, like cheat sheets, which I use as well. Um, but because he was reading the lyrics off a cheat sheet, he wasn't really performing. And uh, yeah, when I saw him this time, he'd got his full band, but he wasn't using cheat sheets, so he was being very engaging. Like literally to the point at which like there's breaks in the music. He was doing these little spins, and they like were really good. I don't. It's hard to explain it. It's just like. If I tried to do it, it would be super cringy, but he's like pretty, he's a cool dude, you know, he's wearing a suit and like he had sunglasses on at one point and stuff. Um, but yeah, so his like performance has really come on. He's like, he's always been a pretty good singer, you know. Um, sometimes it's hard to actually tell what he's singing because he's got a very deep voice as well. Uh, but uh, yeah, he's come on a lot as a performer, so that was really cool. And then on Saturday... Yeah, we, I stayed over at Noemi's and then we had breakfast. We had some of my breakfast bread, funnily enough. Uh, I would show you because I made some more for us to have this morning, but then I gave her the ones that are left But I'm gonna make some more later, so it's fine uh, Yeah, did that and then I came back to mine grabbed my stuff went to meet Dave at the mad squirrel, which is a pub here in town and um, Yeah, they have like a beer tree a tree with like cans of beer on it And there was a local photographer there taking photos for his project called faces of Wickham I will say the guy who took his got his photo took before me and Dave was a white supremacist and he was wearing the you know the the cross the celtic cross on his shirt and had like all these white supremacist tattoos and like he was like skinhead and it was weird but um yeah so me and dave got some photos taken of us with so we have our instruments as well and we're hoping to use that as our ep cover actually speaking of the ep yesterday i did some recording as well so we've got uh a song of mine called Inner State. I'm just going to play you this little excerpt actually because I do a good scream at the end of it. So I don't have to do the mixing, Dave does the mixing, so he's got to worry about what the hell he's going to do with that. Possibly take it out, he might He might just take it out and just duplicate one of my previous lines of, of vocals, who knows. But yeah, it's, looking, it's sounding pretty cool because he played the bass line on it as well. Uh, so, yeah. So I'm doing the acoustic guitar and the vocals in it, and then Dave did the rest.
So yeah, that's a song called Inner State that I wrote when I was about 18, maybe 19. And it's really weird that we're doing it now and it's kind of fun to re-record it because I've got a different take on how the song should be played, you know? Um, so we've got that and then he's got a song called uh, The Same Sun Right Shines On Everyone, which I've been working on. And I've got to do another one of my songs. So yeah, this is why we're getting the photo taken is for this EP, which will hopefully be out in the new year. In the meantime, if you go to theilk.co.uk, uh, T-H-E-I-L-K.co.uk, you can listen to Foot Christmas, which is our Christmas single and our first release. <laughs> um, yeah, so I did that and then in the evening it was the Arts Centre Christmas party. I actually got a little bit anxious beforehand. It's one of those where I've been looking forward to it a lot and putting a lot of pressure on myself to enjoy it. And um, yeah, it turned out to be absolutely nothing like I expected it to be as well. But we still had a really good night, so that's good. Um, and yeah, bumped into a few friends. So Dave was there, Amanda, who's Dave's housemate. Um, so her and Mamie were chatting a lot and they got on really well, which is cool because I've known, I've known uh, Amanda for years as well. And... Uh, yeah, like, the Moons were there, there's a family called the Moons, they run a, a shop called Ruby Moon which sells hippie stuff, and they're super hippie, I was talking to Claire, who's like the matriarch of the of the family, and um, she would point it out that behind the bar at the art centre they had some like Nestle hot chocolate or something, and she was like, boo, Nestle, who do, like, and she's like, literally she's going to talk to the board and be like, we shouldn't be buying Nestle products, and I think that's badass, because I also think she's right, so... And actually, I don't live by that, so that's something that I've been thinking that I myself am going to try and try and do. Oh, I'm wearing my Christmas shirt. What does it say? I can't remember. Gangster rapper. That's it. There we go. And then <laughs> Dave, Dave was wearing a T-shirt that said that was very similar. It said "Gangsters say ho ho ho." <laughs> Which, yeah, excellent. Uh, very very festive gangsterism, I guess. So yeah, it was a good evening. They had some live music in the one room and then in the other room. Well, they had an Eric Clapton tribute band, which I missed. I heard from outside as I was having a cigarette before going in, the last few bits of uh, I Shot the Sheriff. So I was there and I just heard like, down, 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 down. And then it was, that was all I heard of the Eric Clapton tribute band. And he played two sets and I missed both of them. But there was music on in this other room as well. So really, I think it's a bit strange. They should have had him as like a headline act, really. Because I don't, I feel like he probably didn't have a very big audience to, to listen to him as well. But anyway, that's all by the by. But a good evening was had, lots of alcohol. So a little bit hungover today, not too hungover. Naomi stayed over and yeah, we had breakfast bread. Listened to, what's her name? Kenny, oh my God. Kenny Arcana, uh, who is a French rapper. I've also been listening to, oh God, what's his name? I can't remember his fucking name, but I've been listening to somebody else as well. Uh, yeah, trying to improve my French. So yeah, and then we just nipped to Sainsbury's. Noemi has gone back to hers to have food and I don't know, just to, you know, have a Sunday, I guess, as the cat. So I'm being productive, gonna do some filming, gonna do a little bit of work. I have no books to update you on, other than that I'm still reading A Skin Full of Shadows. I possibly haven't made any progress since last time I talked to you, because yesterday was nuts. So, that is where I'm at. And that's where I'm going to leave you for now. Might do another update later. We'll see. If not, I'll probably see you tomorrow to say goodbye. And maybe to say I've finished Francis Hardinge. I don't know. Hello. It is um, Monday. Monday the 9th. Um, I have a bunch of books to update you on. Basically, I've been trying to go through the rest of my Ladybird books. I've actually been doing a lot of work today because basically I found out how much tax I owe. And I owe a lot of tax. I owe more tax than I thought I did. So I'm a bit worried about how I'm going to pay for it. So luckily, it's kind of coincided with when I'm downsizing my book collection. So hopefully I'll make some money from that. And I'm just going to work as much overtime as I can. So I... Hello. <laughs> So, um, but yeah, I, you know, I've been cracking on with other stuff in the meantime as well. Uh, I think that's all to tell you in terms of what I've got up to today. I've made some breakfast bread as well. And yeah, so I have all these books to update you on. So this might take a while, so I might even do this in shifts. We'll see. Uh, these are all by Vera Southgate. So here we have the gingerbread man. And this is basically the tale of this uh, gingerbread man who gets brought to life. Basically, his parents want a real boy and they end up with this boy made out of gingerbread. And uh, everyone wants to eat him and it's kind of like a cyclical tale, I guess, of like, you know, he meets one person and they want to eat him and he runs away, and then the next person, etc, etc. Until he meets a fox who offers to take him across a river and, you know, he's like, oh no, you're going to get wet if you sit on my tail, you'd better sit on my snout and then he eats him. So, uh, yeah, 3.5 out of 5. I don't think I'd ever read that as like the original uh, version of it, you know. 
Then we have the Little Red Hen. I'm going to be honest, I already don't remember anything about this one. This was another one that I hadn't read. But all the other ones that I've read that I haven't read before, they kind of stood out in my memory, you know? And I do remember reading and enjoying them, whereas this one didn't really stand out at all. So I'm going to have to give it a 2 out of 5. Here we have the Magic Porridge Pot. This is another one that I hadn't come across before, uh, and it's basically about this porridge pot that keeps on refilling itself until there's, like, porridge everywhere. Um, yeah, another fairly unmemorable one. I'll give that one, like, a 3 out of 5. It was okay, but um, nothing special, really. We have Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs. Now, this was a pretty good interpretation of it as well, because these are all, like, sort of from the 1960s, 1970s, from the original run that Lady Bird did, where, again, this lady called Vera Southgate did uh, retellings of all of these stories. They also all have at the back of them, like, more information on the tale as well, so it talks about its cultural significance and all that stuff. And, yeah, I'd probably give this, like, a 4 out of 5. I, I always, I've always been fairly partial to um, Snow White as a story in general. Um, maybe not the movie interpretations and stuff, but as a, as a fairy tale, certainly. Then we have The Princess and the Pea. I gave this one a 2 out of 5. My reasoning for this is just like my problem with it, that I don't really understand why a princess should be able to feel a pea through 20 mattresses. I guess it's sending out the message that princesses are, are feeble and weak and need protecting. I don't know. Um, but yeah, I just also I remember that one from when I was a kid and I, I never really liked it You know, there was just always something about it that I just didn't enjoy then we have the enormous turnip So this one was also one that I hadn't read before it's basically another one of these uh, like so, cyclical tales where Basically it builds and builds and builds so a man is growing turnips and he grows this enormous turnip and he tries to pull, pull it out And he can't so he gets his wife to help and then the daughter and then the dog and then the cat and then a mouse and yeah, it was alright. It reminded me of Roald Dahl a little bit, actually. And I reckon Dahl was probably at least... He must have been familiar with it when he wrote something like... Um, uh, fucking... That's it, James and the Giant Peach. So yeah, I gave it like a 3.5. It was pretty good. Here we have The Big Pancake. This is one that I hadn't read before. Um, actually, I already can't remember it other than it was super surreal in this pancake. Like, everyone was chasing after it. Yeah, and then... Yeah, and then a pig caught it. In fact, the pig did exactly the same thing as the uh, as the thing did for the gingerbread man, where he got he got the he got the pancake to go onto the pig's snout, and then he ate the pig's snout to like pretending he was going to take him across some water. That's interesting, actually. I didn't notice that at the time, but yeah, those are both very similar in that respect. Uh, but yeah, it was probably a 3.25 out of that one. Nothing special. Here we have the three billy goats gruff. I gave this one a four out of five. I think the reason for it is, is I relate to the to the ogre that lives underneath the bridge and who, he just doesn't want to be disturbed. He hates being disturbed. And I can understand that, you know? I don't like being disturbed either. So fair play to the ogre. Um, yeah, four out of five. Then we've got the elves and the shoemaker. So this, I, rem I do remember this one from when I was a kid actually, but only vaguely. Basically this poor shoemaker, he gets down to his last piece of leather and he leaves it out thinking in the morning, I'm gonna go and make this into my last pair of shoes. And then these elves come in and turn them into this really beautiful pair of shoes. And they're so beautiful that he can sell it for twice the normal pair of a pair of shoes. So the next night he gets two pieces of leather and then it you know, keeps on doubling and doubling until eventually he's a rich man. And then right at the end of it, him and his wife are like, we're going to find out um, what's going on, you know? And they discover these these elves have been coming in. But the elves are wearing these like really threadbare garments, a bit like Dobby in, um, in Harry Potter. And so they decide to make these elves some clothes. And then they make the elves some clothes, and then the elves just are like, oh, thank you. We don't need to stay anymore. So actually, I think it probably is, uh, one of them it did say is like influenced Dobby and Harry Potter and I would suspect it's that one, especially with the idea of the clothes bringing freedom as well, you know? Here you have the three little pigs, the classic story where they build houses out of straw and then wood and then bricks. It's actually a little bit more violent than I remembered as well, like the wolf ends up getting boiled alive in a cauldron of water. Um, and the other two pigs just die because I think in the version I've heard before the the wolf blows the house down and the pigs run away And then all three pigs end up in the uh, in the house made of bricks Whereas in this one the first two pigs just died so for that I got to kind of respect to give it a, a, a four out of five I guess for what it is Then we have the ugly duckling. I quite like the moral in this story It's obviously the duckling who gets bullied for being different and then it turns out he's a swan So it's kind of positive that he's different, you know and yeah, I think that's something that is good, a good message, to, you know, to send to kids. 
And uh, yeah, I enjoyed reading it actually. Probably a 3.75 out of 5, not quite a 4. Again, it's one of those that I never really enjoyed much as a kid. As an adult, I think I have a better appreciation of it, but still not, you know, not my favourite of the lot. And then finally we have Sleeping Beauty. And this one is a good story, but it does have that weird consent issue of the prince just kissing the princess while she's asleep. But other than that, it's pretty good. And actually, there was, um, in Snow White, I thought what was quite well handled in that, that, that Snow White had eaten this apple and it had put her in this like death state. And then she was brought back to life because the carriage she was in jolted and like she hiccuped it back up or whatever. And so I thought that was good because that was a lot less rapey, you know? But overall, still like 3.5 out of 5 if you overlook that. And then we have A Skin Full of Shadows by Francis Hardinge. So this was a buddy read with Anthony Andrews. It's like historical fiction, magical realism, YA. In this, basically, uh, people can turn into ghosts and certain people can like harness the power of ghosts. And so like our protagonist effectively gets adopted by this family who are just using her body as a vessel, you know? There's really an interesting scene where she's being given a bath and she's really superstitious about it because she doesn't do baths you know um she washes herself with a rag on a stick <laughs> she literally says that it's great and that she only like does one part at a time so she's never fully naked because that'd be a fine way to kill it, to catch a chill you know um but yeah she's they basically want to clean her and like make sure that she's pox free and all this stuff so that someone can inhabit her body which is quite sinister overall really well written i think i enjoyed it more than the lie tree i will say that the pacing kind of dropped off a bit towards the end but overall i still gave it a four out of five i thought it was pretty good and now i'm reading day by eli weisel which is a novel it's the third in the night trilogy so night was non-fiction then there's dawn and day which are both novels which is very strange kind of why i'm reading it to be honest to see what the crack is pretty good so far i read dawn not too long ago with alex so i'm buddy reading this one with and i thought it was pretty good for what it was and this one's pretty good so far as well but i'll be doing a, a full review so yeah that's it, that's me up to date, and with that, as I've been going on for quite a long time in this vlog, I'm gonna love you and leave you. So as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books, and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot, bye.